Uh, let me start with a few questions to you uh, for understanding what today I'm going to talk about. So my first question is, if you need to recruit a someone in your team, are you confident in your capability to choose a right person? In other words, by CV and a 30 minutes or one hour presentation, a one hour interview, could you find out people's capabilities, whether it is fitted to your team or not? Could you raise your hands if you are not confident in your capability to choose a right person? Are there anyone who are confident in choosing the right person? Great. So why, why are you confident? So could you just explain why, why you're confident in choosing the right person? I've been doing this for years and years, and I'm just uh, amazed to say such things. And I would say I'm, I'm not 100% confident, maybe, but uh, I would say I'm confident. OK, so you just, you know, uh, just, he just explained, based on the experience for more than just maybe 10 years, you know, 20 years, and further, based on the, his success of creating a great team, so you are confident in choosing the right person. So I think you know, it is a very just interesting question because many of you are not confident, but at the end, you have to make an interview. You have to choose a person based upon the interview. So because one of the nervousness comes from people's rationality. For example, please just you know, think about an opposite way. If you want to apply for a very great position, for example, Google's senior, for example, salesperson. You want to really just work for Google. And that, but at the same time, let's assume you are introvert. Because many people just say that extroverted person are more fitted to sales position, but you are introvert. If you are rational enough, what are you going to do for an interview? Are you going to tell a true story through the, in, through the interview. Oh, I'm a so introvert person. I'm not so good at working with others. But in reality, you are not going to say in that way. Rather, you try to hide your, some of your stories. Of course, you are, going to tell, you are not going to tell a lie, but just, you, know, you try to hide some parts of your personality traits. So due to this rationality, people, because you know people's rationality, and that's due to this, you, know, you think, interview might be difficult. But also at the same time, people tend to become overconfident. Today you are maybe so, how do you say, you know, not so just you know, overconfident, but just, I, I, I'm not saying that you are overconfident, but just, you know, <laughs> but just, you know, uh, but just, you know, if we say I just you know, ask you know, this type of just questions, especially for, because, you know, uh, last month I went to Harvard Business School, I just asked the same question to Harvard Business School students. They are so confident. Oh, you know, I can choose the right person. This is just a very, just, you know, very common way you know, that just in HBS and people are just you know, talking about. But anyway, <laughs> maybe some of may not. <laughs> but due to this, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a tough. So then just, you know, let me just you know, ask our next question. So when you judge a person, what type of capabilities are you looking at the most? Of course, it depends on the position. But you know, as a person, if you want to just you know, hire someone in your team, what type of you know, just, you know, traits are you seriously looking at? Are there anyone who can just share your thoughts? Because you, uh, please. Communication skills. When you're communication skills. Great. Your communication skills are very just an important just in a part. Any others? OK. It's, <laughs> it's also just this very just important part. Any others? Logicalness. Yeah, so maybe logicalness is also just important. So, so many traits, but sometimes before hearing you know, my just questions, when you just you know, go to interview, are you preparing enough? What kind of traits you are going to investigate in further through the interview? So many just you know, interviewers don't have a clear, clear pictures. What kind of traits I'm going to see? It is a reality for the interview. So, based upon latest neuroscience and the behavioral genetics, people's capabilities can be decomposed into three components. One is personality traits, 
which is related to genetics. So it's very just you know, tough to change. Of course, you, know, you may change. You, can't, you, may, you may be able to change, but it's tough. But around the personality traits, competencies, it's a kind of behavioral traits which can be trained through experience. As I pointed out, through the experience, you can learn these competencies. I'm going to just show you more in the competencies later. But also, uh, outer layers are skills. Competencies are more related to how, and the skills are more related to what. So skills are more, it's, it's much easier to get skills, even at later stage, through the education. So these are main three traits. But at the same time, when you are working for a company or a society, clearly social factors also matter. For example, someone who is so good at in a one company, but this person may not be worked in a different environment. So these are social factors also related. And this, you know, these you know, three main personal main just traits with social factors, a key factor to find out whether this person can be worked in your team or not. So th because these are the main reasons why we started growth. Because we know many people are not so confident in choosing the right person. And the further, the most important thing because you know, we are, especially a company, for, you know, for, from just you know, your company's perspectives, your company is who you recruit, right? People are the core components of any society, any company. And thus, if you are not so good at choosing a right person in your society, in your company, it means your company is going to face uh, really difficult questions. Also, in Japanese companies, another issue is one-time recruitment immediately after undergrad students. Of course, you know, it's mid-term mid career uh, existed, but uh, still, large recruitment can be happened immediately after the undergrad graduations, right? So due to this, uh, GROW was born for solving these issues by using artificial intelligence. This is the main just core reason why we started this business. So let me just explain this in further. Um, I'm going to just you know, talk you know, these issues of both, uh, back and forth because you know, it, it, these are just in you know, core of our just, you know, grow just in the business itself. So, so let me just, you know, uh, let me just you know, show how, oh, there are some just issues. Maybe just, you know, it might be deconnected when. Just a moment. So I, I would like to just you know show uh, some videos. Can I finally succeed? So for as I mentioned, introvertness, extrovert are related to personality traits. In a science world. Mainly five big factors existed, big five. These are extrovert or openness uh, to new just issues, and the further nervousness, and uh, um, uh, collaboration, and the further, uh, uh, and, um, how do you say, uh, seriously uh, work hard. These are just you know, five just main factors. I'm going to just explain later. But these personality traits, as just, you know, just now, uh, we just, you know, just talked, you try to hide your real personality traits. In that case, how can we disclose your real personality traits? It's a really tough question. Of course, it is not just related to personality traits. You are tendency of prejudice. In the United Nations, around in 2002, if you look at these board members, all members are not women, male, and mainly white people. And the United Nations started to not be nervous. Why it was happened? Because many people, when interviewing, never say, I have any prejudice against race or against gender. But in reality, it seems to be existed. At that time, United Nations asked Washington University and Harvard University psychology, psychological professors and also neuroscience professors to check it out. How can we just find out 
the real prejudice tendency. So due to this, implicit association test was emerged. I'm going to explain, uh, maybe just you know, rather than explaining by myself, but it's better to see a very sh short video to understand implicit association test. Sorry, just a moment. Why? So maybe some just some difficult. Just maybe just some basically implicit association test tries to have all candidates to do a small gain by just you know, always just you know in a very five seconds some just you know cognitive bias information. Then how you react to this prejudice related information? So based upon this, this implicit association test tries to find out your potential prejudice. So this is what Washington University uh, professors have made. But after that, our IGS think that this IAT is a very interesting tool to find out a real personality traits of an interviewer. We apply this implicit association test for personality traits related to big five factors with finger movement. Because now, just, you know, when just, you know, this implicit association test was made, it was almost uh, 10 or uh, 15 years ago. At that time, smartphone was not so common. But now smartphone is common. It, it, in other words, we can use additional information with traditional implicit association tests. So if you are just, you know, your fingers are just you know, puzzled for some of these certain questions, it means it shows some of you are just you know, try to just, you know, hide your true story and so on. So we just you know, take you know, all you know, information by pixel by pixel. So then we just you know, try to just, you know, get your potential just, you know, story. And this you know, result is really just you know, extraordinary. The reason, for example, we worked for many Japanese large companies. Our clients are only point hours, Mitsubishi Corporation, Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ, Nomura, Nomura, Nomura Securities. And these companies have started to use us because Finally, they can find out personality traits of all candidates. So, and, until they just you know, started to use our IAT. Interestingly, after doing interviews, 95% of students explain, we are, I am extrovert person. But based upon the genetics test, only in Jap for, Japanese, uh, Jap for Japanese, only 60% can be extrovert. 40% should be introvert. But uh, when the interviews, 95% people say, oh, I'm extrovert. Because many people also, just many people you know, think that just extroverted person can, be pass, can, can pass the interviews easily. So, so due to this, they try to hide. Some people, introverted person, try to just hide real personality traits. So, so then this, you know, IAT, so, you know, we are just you know, using IAT with finger movement. Uh, sorry for that, just, you know, some just, you know, uh, sound just in issues, but uh, maybe just, you know, uh, if you, you look at this, this is our application, smartphone application size. So, so it is a very, just, you know, five, just, you know, you know tests, and the start of the test. So then just you know, try to just, you know, this is a finger movement. So we just you know, show you know, various just, you know, questions. And then just, you know, people just you know, answer. It's a kind of classification game. But uh, through the classification game, we try to just create some cognitive bias information. Then your just, you know, fingers movement can be changed. So if you are interested, please download. This is for free. And this, you, know, you can just you know, check it out with our application. So this is for implicit association tests with finger movement recognition times big five times smartphones. And then it is now patent protected in Japan. And now we are applying for global patent. You know, patent. And that's now just an IAT in a, in a smartphone. Only our IGS can make it. 
And this, uh, due to this, uh, now just in our clients uh, uh, increase, not only in Japan, but also in the rest of the world. Also then, competencies, personality traits can be found out through implicit association test game. But for competencies, competencies can be evaluated usually by your peers or your boss, right? For example, if you just, you know, if you think by yourself, oh, I'm so creative person. But many of you are just in peers don't think that. In that case, your creativity can't be worked, right? Because you never take a position related to create, create, creative departments. And that's not always your these competencies can be, should be evaluated by your peers. Even if your peers evaluate you as a creative person, then in that case, you are just, you know, you can just, you know, uh, just take you know, this type of just, you know, positions. So then just, you know, we decided to check each person's competencies by 360 degrees evaluations. Maybe just, you know, you are so familiar to 360, and you know in Japanese words, sontaku. So this is sontaku was, you know, you know both, you know, always just asking you, you know, his or her subordinates, oh, please just, you know, get a good evaluation for me, right? It is very common in Japan. So 360 uh, hasn't worked, at least in Japanese companies. Also, at, you know, I worked for Barclays, but you know, at Barclays, our, also we had some just, you know, tough, you know, problems when we, we just you know, apply 360 because, you know, some, some just answers we can't believe. So then, we based upon traditional 360 degree evaluations, our, our just, you know, uh, uh, new invention is we evaluate evaluators. Do you know what I mean? So usually evaluatee are evaluated, but we evaluate evaluators. So we just try to check oh, whether you can judge other person or not in logical thinking. Whether you are so good at just you know, finding out creative person or not. So our just strength is we try to just check evaluators' judgment skills in each 25 competencies. And the further, we just check whether this person is seriously doing 360-degree uh, evaluations or not. For example, some people, based upon our analysis, over 30% of evaluators don't think these competencies seriously then just, just, you know, do uh, just good, 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 without, you know, any considerations. We just check all fingers movement, whether he or she checks each question carefully with the rubrics, because, you know, we just, you know, our application has rubrics. So then just, you know, by just you know, checking fingers movement and the further each person's uh, personality traits, as well as people's judgment skill, we finally just, you know, just you know, do just you know, 360 degrees evaluations. So these are 25 uh, competencies factors. I'm going to show you how just you know, does it work. At first, just, you know, it's a self-evaluations. Self-evaluation just you know, starts, this is the rubrics. So each question, there are just you know, rubrics. In other words, if you don't see all the rubrics, our application finds you, oh, you are not so serious to just you know, use just our applications. We always check in pixel by pixel your fingers movement. So then after finishing your, uh, you are just, you know, uh, just you know, first, uh, uh, your self variations, each just, you know, skills you know, can be just, you know, in a score, your score can be shown. Then after that, request for peer variations, you are going to ask your friends, please evaluate me. But also we check what type of friends you choose. We always because try to check. For example, you are undergrad students. You can only choose undergrad students. It means you don't have good mentors. Or you may not work in seriously. Due to this, you can't ask professors to evaluate you. We check each profiles of evaluators. So, so this, so, you know, so, you know, we just you know, always try to check evaluators. So then, after just you know, having all the evaluators to do, we can see the gap between them. So due to this, we try to just check you know, competencies. So we, we use this by uh, smartphone applications and the further current uh, web portal. So these are our main uh, characters of grow, uh, grow, uh, grow. 
So now, just for 10 months, we have got more than 100,000 students have started to use. And the further, many global top clients, as I mentioned, Anna Mitsubishi Corporation, and further interesting, Abu Dhabi government. Uh, Abu Dhabi government has uh, decided to use our applications. Maybe it is going to be more than one million uh, applicants are going to be uh, are going to use our uh, grow grow. And the father, Robert Walters, UK uh, UK HR companies decided to use our grow for judging uh, people. So this uh, we are expanding very fast. And the father, numerous awards. You know, luckily, we got the MITI, the second best award. Uh, in uh, related to Hataraki Kata Kaikaku, HR Tech Innovation Award, HR Tech Best Hiring Award. We have got so many uh, HR Tech related awards. By the way, I just came back from uh, Las Vegas this morning. This week, HR Tech Large Conference was held in Las Vegas uh, for one week. Interesting, in the, in the States, more than 400 HR Tech companies. In Japan, HR Tech companies is almost 30 to 40. It's almost you know, 10 times larger in the US, US part. And also market size here is uh, 400 billion US dollars equivalent market in, in, in the States, but in Japan, too small. And thus we have a large market opportunities. So then also Grow uh, just uh, was, uh, becomes a Harvard Business School case study. And then this is the reason why last month I just went to Harvard as a protagonist of uh, this just in case. And I just you know, discussed uh, this, uh, our just grow case with uh, Harvard Business School students. So because it was really interesting because uh, HBS professors uh, think that we are the, the most advanced AI us usage, for, especially for hiring part. And this, we try to just take these opportunities further to expand in, in, the, in the States as well. So then, let me just explain further how, what this GROW can do. I just mentioned some possibilities to hire a better just in a person uh, compared with your own capability. But also, this, this tool is very good for just you know, three just in parts, bias, application, and further, AI versus humanity, three other interesting issues. Let me ask the next questions. When? You need to hire an innovative person because I know uh, this just you know just you, just you try to just create innovations in your companies, right? So if you want to uh, just you know create innovations in your uh, company, and if you want to you know if you want to just hire innovative person, what kind of competencies are you going to watch carefully? So please just look at these just in 25 contentions. So let me just say problem setting, solution oriented, logical thinking, doubt what is said to be true, creativity, ability to get things done, inner values, vision, self-efficacy, growth, decisiveness, resilience, emotional control, interests, ability to express yourself, flexibility, empathy, and the listening skills, open-minded, extroversions, ability to uh, weird influence, uh, ability to influence others, passion. Uh, evangelize, ability to lead a team, global mindset, commitment to a team, sense of ethics. Which components are most important when you want to hire an innovative person? What kind of factors do you emphasize the most? Are there anyone? Number four. Number four. Oh, doubt what is said to be true. Always doubt assumptions. Interesting. Yeah, please. Any others? Five. Huh? Five. Five. Oh, creativity. It's more direct. Creativity. Any other? Parts? One. One? Oh, problem setting and solution oriented. These are clearly very important factors to make, uh, 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 make, make innovations. We work for a company which said to us, we want to hire innovative persons. They usually just hire uh, 80 to 100 uh, new employees every year out of of 5,000 applicants. So then, we just, you know, uh, by, we just, you know, uh, at first, yes, we checked the past their interview results by just, you know, in, uh, incorporating past their interview results into our AI artificial intelligence grow model. Then we create AI model to duplicate what an interviewer has done. You know what I mean? So we just create an AI engine duplicate AI engine uh, of a company um, based upon their past interview results. So what we found was so interesting. 
this is just a company mention. We don't care about school names. Because sometimes in Japan, you know, Todai, Hitotsubashi, Keio, Waseda names are so critical to just, you know, to just, you know, for a new hire. But also they just mention, we love innovations. Oh, oh so, so in, based upon just, you know, you know, this result, what can we found at this? They love schools. <laughs> but also they like logical thinking. They like decisiveness. On the other hand, they hate creative persons. <laughs> <laughs> and empathy problem setting. So these are results. They, are, they were so surprised. But it is not so just you know, bizarre because you know, many Japanese companies tend to have the same just, you know, how to say, results. We just, you know, just applied for many companies, for some exceptions. Many companies, just you know, what they say is different from what they do. It is a reality. So due to this, you know, clearly just you know, by just you know, seeing this, in, any innovations can be happened through just you know, recruitment of, of just you know, average Japanese companies. So then, by just showing this result to a company, this company started to use our grow artificial intelligence. We just, you know, try to just, you know, change, you know, this, you know, part and further and further, try to more just creative and try to just, you know, students more problem setting, and we just show a different just candidates list, rather than having them do uh, just, you know, interview by themselves. So as I just mentioned, your company is who you recruit, Bias really matters. So if you just you are just an interviewer, so just you know in a fond of logical people, because sometimes logical people are not so creative, right? Because you know, sometimes in the interviews, the creative people you know just say you know oh blah blah blah, it's just one thing and B and C and D, you know at the end is you know you can't understand what just you know this you know candidate mentioned. But uh, this is some just you know, characters of creative persons, right? Of course, you know it would be better someone is logical at the same time creative, but it's tough. To just you know, find this, you know, to just you know, uh, ask you know, students to have both. So, so due to this, uh, clearly, just uh, we think artificial intelligence can do much better job. And also, uh, interesting result. So, also this week, um, uh, HR Tech uh, conference. This uh, Lazlo Bock, uh, he's very famous in Google's HR head. He was HR head. Uh, work rules in the work rules. Hiring is much, much more important than training. Based upon the past result of Google, they have found out training doesn't vary. Because many companies, many Japanese companies love training. But the training is not value for money. But the more, they should use more money for recruitment. And thus, uh, clearly, Japanese companies seriously need to think about new recruitment system. This is the reason why our grow can be expanded so fast in many, uh, many Japanese large companies. And also bias. Also bias is very difficult because, uh, for example, as I just mentioned related to United Nations uh, just, uh, example, uh, so still a gender, uh, gender or race or just in other just in school's name and the just in bias. Uh, can be existed in the interview. Many interviewers interview don't realize this bias itself. Why? So at Harvard Business School case, now just you know, for MBA students and for executive students, after um, the usual just two main cases. One case is uh, SG Cohen, which is investment boutique firm, Societe General, this French uh, investment boutique firms. When they hire someone, all 25 managing directors, and uh, all, they have to get 25 consensus for choosing any person, only by people. After doing this case, our grow can be adopted at HEBS case. Then they can just see the extreme just inside, artificial intelligence recruitment. After uh, two cases, HBS students have to do additional work. Let me show you what kind of works they have to do. Also, this is video. 
So maybe just with no just you know uh, sound, I'm going to just explain this by myself. Maybe this you know, no sound it might be okay. Miles, just to get water. All I have to do is turn on the phone. I think privilege is when um, some people have something. So what they do is all the HBS students, just you know, or hands and hands, 75 uh, HBS students make a line. And each question, for example, your parents are divorced when you are a child. In that case, one step back. And if you are boarding schools, one step forward. And they started to understand, you know, even in all the same HBS classmates, some people are more privileged. Some people are less privileged. So it is a very large impact for many HBS students. Oh. Sorry. So at the end, uh, some of uh, my very close friends at HBS uh, school students, um, who, uh, who is black and uh, uh, women, and uh, who has a, a large, very seriousness when uh, she was a, a small child. At that time, she was much, much behind from other HBS students. She was, at the end, crying. Because she didn't understand what are the difference, even in HBS students. But it is a very large impact when you are thinking about to ask interview to your colleagues. Because you don't know the real bias that your colleague may have. For example, because you don't know your colleagues well. In that case, maybe also you, you just don't know well about the past of your colleague. In that case, if you ask him or her an interview, some bias might emerge because she or he makes interview based upon some privileged past. So this is the most important thing, that maybe just a subjective, also people's judgment might create some issues. So this is a bias issue. Our group tries to reduce bias in the recruitment. At the end, our company is going to change, less biased society. And also grow analytics. This grow can be used in a different ways. For example, we usually just um, check uh, good performers and bad performers of our organizations, try to see what the difference in competence is. So for example, this company's case in a value self efficacy is higher, so we could know, just, you know, two, you know, competencies. These, you know, com you know competencies person can uh, just show a better performance. Uh, and also decisiveness are uh, important factors. So we try to at first you know, just you know, create AI model based upon uh, the company's employees, good performers and bad performers. And based upon this, uh, we just, you know, screen students and then just based upon our just in AI engines, try to create a ranking of whole students. So in this case, uh, only top students at the end can be elected by these companies. So based on this, our AI capabilities, uh, because for example, all Nippon Airways last year, they uh, used our um, uh, AI engine. Usually they just you know, have got one, uh, Five, uh, 50,000 50, applicants applying for just 50 positions. But just, you know, only two interviewers or only two screeners can just check in their entry sheets. So they usually just check in whether they, you know, writing is beautiful or not. <laughs> because it's a very, for them, it's important because it's tough for them, you know, to just read just, you know, very just bad, you know, writing. And the further, how much they write and which schools they work. However, at the same time, they just, you know, have you know, had issues. Maybe they want, they want not to use just, you know, uh, you know, just that way. Then they decided to use, you know, our just, you know, grow applications to screen people. So then just, you know, what they have found out is, at first, they just use normal entry sheet screening. 
And then they just use, also just all students use our group. Then they just pick up 400 people who didn't pass in their usual screening. And interestingly, at the end, the final three top candidates, final candidates were people who are screened by GROW, usually who are screened out by usual process. So what they have found out, these, uh, these um, students' characters are schools are very rural areas, national universities, they haven't hired before. And the further, they just, you know, their writing is really bad, <laughs> bad writing. However, after doing an interview, they are really serious and they have great capabilities. And then just, you know, AI can just you know, support this kind of screening. And these are also all our Nippon Airways just in results. And also, uh, because uh, we just use you know, 360 degrees evaluations, we can just also just you know, check who evaluates who, and the further, what kind of relationship exists in the whole uh, um, Japanese university students, because more than 100,000 students are using our GROW, so we can just see networks. Not only Facebook types of networks, in addition to, to this, we know who evaluates, you know, how much this person evaluates you know, this. So, so we can just see you know, it's a kind of superiority over all just you know, one, more than 100,000 students' uh, capabilities from this just network. By using this network, in last year, Mitsubishi Corporation used our GROW in a very interesting way. So as you know well, Mitsubishi Corporation is one of the most famous uh, companies for new undergrad. Uh, however, they are not so happy because you know, some top students prefer going to McKinsey or Goldman Sachs, but they would like to hire them directly. So what they just you know, have just you know, you know, tried to just do, at first they did interview, uh, uh, they did in interns, and then they asked all interns to use our growth. After just doing this, because you know, the meaning of you know, this usage by interns means they have to ask more than five students to evaluate these interns, right? Because it's in a growth system. So then just you know, many just, you know, top students around friends started to use grow. So then they pick up top, top performers of interns. They just check, they, they ask us to invite evaluators of top performers of interns to special a session uh, made by Mitsubishi Corporation and uh, our IGS. So then uh, many people, just you know, uh, more than uh, 100 people showed up in this just, uh, special session. These 100 people have already got uh, offer a letter from Goldman Sachs, McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, or Google. Then four, four people at the end joined Mitsubishi Corporation uh, by quitting offers from Goldman Sachs and others. Because Mitsubishi Corporation uh, HR people are so confident. If they see us, they, are, they think Mitsubishi Corporation can create much interesting opportunities to them, and that these students believe in this. And just, you know, our just grow can be used also in that way. Mitsubishi Corporation loves uh, this way. Also, mental finding. So based upon the personality traits, we can create mental and mentee relationship in a company. And also growth certificate. For example, now, for example, if let's say you are working for a company, if you want to become a data scientist, it's now just a real sexy job in, in the world. But just, you know, usually many employees don't know how to do it. So then in that case, someone want to become a data analyst? Oh. <laughs> At first, just, we just check initial skills assessment. So then, uh, so you know, in this case, uh, statistics in you know, Python and um, just you know some just you know, competencies are satisfied with a data analysis you know, skill set, but only Python skills are not so satisfied. Then in that case, we just you know create uh, special training sessions for these persons uh, of Python. Then after just getting a good result, skills assessment of Python, and then they can just get this just uh, data scientist in positions. This is what we are working with some uh, Japanese mega bank. So finally, AI and the human nature. Because you are in at Silicon Valley, you must be very happy to just you know, see just this result. Google, AlphaGo, just uh, won against global top Go player. 
So it was the second time. Last year, Lee Sedo, Korean uh, Go uh, player, lost against AlphaGo. However, at that time, it was a really good game, good match. At least one game was won by human nature, Lee Sedo. So AlphaGo lost one game last year. But uh, this year, the difference was much, much larger. It means singularity. Because human nature, on average, the growth usually is linear, not exponential. But AI can be exponential. Because last year, it was a good match means almost the same level. But AI, due to the enforcement learning, they can learn much faster than human nature. If you are so familiar to enforce, um, uh, enforcement learning rather than supervised learning. With supervised learning, you always need teacher, trainers. But the need, uh, enforcement learning, you don't need any human nature's trainers. But rather, AI can become a trainer of another AI. Then automatically they can just you know or just you know try to just you know going to a, a just you know more stronger prey. So then this is a result happened in AlphaGo, and also immediately after uh, this uh, AlphaGo play, this uh, Chinese uh, Go player mentioned, "Oh, it was the loss of human nature. No future for human nature," she said. Also in China, this uh, online uh, streaming was cut suddenly because they are really nervous because human nature lost against artificial intelligence. But at the same time, interestingly, deep mind people say this is the winning of human nature because AI, this engine itself, can be made by human nature. So now it is a very important question that you need to think about. In the HR phase, where are we? Now we are only using supervised learning because we are not allowed to use enforcement learning. If you are HR manager in your company, are you confident in taking, hiring someone you think is bizarre, weird? But the AI predicts, or oh, this person can work in your company in 10 years or in five years. It's a kind of challenge because uh, people's selection is a very important part for a company. And also it's a very also interesting just question you need to think about whether AI supports human nature or human nature support AI. Because in the history, AI or machines support human nature. It is a world of supervised learning or unsupervised learning. It's a kind of. However, enforcement learning world, people can support AI. At the end, AI can decide everything. We seriously need to think about it. This is a final just open question to all of you. I think it would be very important for our human nature how much we should ask AI to do this. Of course, we are AI creator. I'm very glad, because, you know, we create our AI engine of GLOW. So it is uh, happy if many companies are going to start our grow in that way. But uh, so far, many companies ask us to say, please don't say too much about our companies. Uh, their companies use artificial intelligence. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. You know, we never say. <laughs> just, you know. Anyway, it's a very just inter reinforcement learning should be adopted in HR world. It is a very interesting just question we need to think about. Are we comfortable? So finally, let me just, you know, uh, just show some just, you know, my just background. Uh, because the reason why, uh, I just mentioned you know, why just, you know, we started to grow. But also, uh, it is related to my uh, just, uh, past uh, experience. As uh, Kenji uh, pointed out, uh, I worked for Barclays Global Investors, San Francisco-based Quant Investment. 
because uh, Barclays Global Value Investors were the largest asset management company in the world, focusing on just quant management. We try to just, you know, cut all human nature's, uh, how do you say, uh, decisions. But we just focus on uh, machine, uh, just machine learning decisions, in other words, AI decisions. And also, our uh, very famous engine is Justin iShares. Uh, our Justin iShares still is the largest ETF in the world because it is you know, coming from um, a financial just arena. So because in almost you know, 1960s, 1970s, efficient frontier and our uh, modern portfolio management theory, these theories have started. Because before 1960s, many people, when someone just was talking about why not using more data? Many people say, oh, no, no, no. Investment can't be made by data. Human, only human nature can make it. It was 50 years ago. But nowadays, uh, high frequency trades, or many fintech companies never depending upon people's decisions, but rather AI is much faster. And that's based upon uh, this experience. Also, this kind of movement is going, uh, it's, it's not movement. It is better in using artificial intelligence. But at the same time, we are not so being nervous because even in the investment world, some people just, you know, can just enjoy investment. We don't know whether it is rational or not, but at least they can enjoy. <laughs> but and just in anyway, uh, based upon just you know this, we think uh, I just you know strongly believe uh, AI can help a company and less bias. So we are happier if we, we know ourselves more and in a less biased world. Thank you very much for listening. Please say in, uh, who you are first. So that yeah. um, My name is Yoshi Tanaka of SoftBank. So uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. I have uh, two uh, pragmatic questions. Number one is, uh, what is the co-relationship of uh, salary levels? So once the uh, HR team higher. So uh, here in the Silicon Valley, so uh, AI engineers is more than uh, 300,000 uh, per year. And the plus, um, stock option that, hey, this is um, bigger than um, Japanese company's CEO. So, <laughs> so what is the correlationship the salary yields? Mm. And keep, keep the, uh, the talented people. And the second, uh, I personally think that this is a bad habit of Japanese company, uh, a regular rotation. Once uh, the HR people uh, hire the good talent uh, at the beginning of the, his career, uh, his or her career, but three years later, hey, to go to sales, to go to uh, GA, or <laughs> this is a bad habit. So what's your view? I see. Thank you very much for the uh, questions. The first question is, we just uh, investigated the correlation uh, between salary level and the people's competencies. It is, to be honest, it is uh, positive correlations between two. However, until a certain point, uh, until a certain point almost 100,000. Uh, so more than 100,000, uh, 100,000 US dollars equivalent. More than 100,000, it's almost no correlations. Until 100,000, it matters. Um, so this is just in my just in first just you know just an answer to you. And for the first, the second part, it's a very good question. It's really tough for HR, current you know Japanese HR, to change this habit. It takes time. It's a kind of challenge because we proposed uh, to many uh, Japanese companies, why not using uh, human nature's allocations by using AI? But the various issues still just challenges exist because no data exists you know, so far because at first we have to accumulate the data of using law because you know, 360 degrees variations are not so just, you know, common in Japanese companies. So it takes time, maybe just you know, five to 10 years, but uh, they have to start now. But still, at the same time, they mentioned, oh, allocation is more just a political word. <laughs> you know, the politics matters. <laughs> in that case, you know, data, equally, we can show some just you know, very rational answers. But uh, pro political, political reasons, they might not be just you know, adopted. And just, you know, it is another just, you know, in serious issues. Also, you are just, you know, second point is also important because right now, liquidity in the Japanese labor market is so low. Due to this, many people started to just, you know, stop growing around after 40s. 
for example, because um, I, I just, you know, I was sent to just, you know, MBAs by my just in previous bank, Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. But just, you know, my just, you know, at that time, just, you know, six members were elected, but uh, four members are still working for Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ. They mentioned, why not just leaving the bank uh, five years ago? They mentioned, oh, due to the pensions, also due to the family, I don't have any incentive to leave the farm. If I can just stay here, my pensions are so stable. So it's more just risk averse, because lifetime employment matters in this in space. So I think you know, labor liquidity also matters for you. Like uh, so uh, to be honest, I, I can't say, because I was really tough time for the past few years. <laughs> I just saying, at the end, it worked, but just saying, uh, for me, entrepreneur is a very interesting option, but uh, to be honest, average employees of Japanese companies, it's a really tough option for them to quit the company, to just create a just venture. Of course, uh, Kenji and also just, you know, I just you know, really just you know, appreciate what you, just, you, know, you are doing and also what you, know, you are doing. Because, but just you know, at the same time, we seriously need to think how to increase labor liquidity and how to just you know, create mindset, entrepreneurship mindset always, as Kenji just pointed out. So it's a very critical part. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, my name is Rio, uh, second MBA second year student here, uh, and I'm working at Mitsubishi Corporation before, oh. before the business class. So, <laughs> um, thank you for providing the very inspiring product and service. Um, so my question is, uh, how could you um, measure the performance you, um, of your application itself? And, and how, how did you persuade the large corporations to introduce your product? Yeah, so the, the Mitsubishi Corporation is our second client. The first client was All Nippon Airways. So the, the reason why now Mitsubishi Corporation decided to use the second year, it means they are so satisfied with the first year result. The first year, they, both Mitsubishi Corporation and All Nippon Airways took a very interesting way. At first, we screen uh, all students by using GROW. And also, two HR officers also rank all employees. They see the correlation between two. What they have found, among, for example, uh, maybe it might be too much company's information, but just you know, among, for example, you know, uh, 300 students, Top 50 students are almost the same. Correlation are 0 0.9, interesting. And the worst 100 students, 0 0.95 correlation. So it means just, you know, our AI can screen students in a certain way. On the other hand, one weakness we have shown, because without any training, because the first year, it's a rule-based. It's a kind of growth data, because you know, we can't do just you know, uh, supervised training, because we haven't seen just you know, interview results. So what they have found out, the top 50 students are the same. However, top 10 rankings that grow just in created, they are not so happy. So it means that the final interviews should be made by human nature, not by AI, because before the training. This is one finding. On the other hand, they, I can't say which competencies, for example, Mitsubishi Corporation just in focus, among five competencies, for example, for all Nippon Airways. So they just, you know, just created a ranking. Interesting, they also just, you know, check each competency through the interview. The correlations of five competencies by human nature are more than 0 0.9. It means one thing that you just in a person think, oh, this person is great. They think, oh, he's logical, he's creative, his decisiveness, his problem setting skills is high. So high correlation. Maybe people are more holistic view, oh, this person is good or not, in the first 30 seconds, based on some just you know, research papers. On the other hand, growth is a more, uh, we just, you know, at first just you know, check each competency. So then we just, you know, summer, you combine five competencies in by just an artificial intelligence way. And this, you know, we can just see, you know, these you know, five competencies uh, correlation is less than 0 
And this, it is also good information for Mitsubishi corporations for all Nippon Airways for interviews. It's a kind of structured interview can be made so easily. So and this, you know, at first, for the first year, they just, you know, just, you know, compare human nature's, HR's, professional's results and our growth results. Then at the end, uh, they think we have at least screen uh, engine is strong enough. Is it uh, your question? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for a very impressive uh, presentation. My name is Dai Gyamaki, uh, MSX student, a one year program for experienced uh, students of corporate sponsored by Develop Development Bank of Japan. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, firstly, uh, one, I was quite impressed with the graph showing that creativity is the least <laughs> decisive factor for Japanese companies. Uh, I'm wondering whether you have tried to do that same test to a uh, global company like Google or Amazon, uh, which is said to be very creative. Uh, I'd like to know whether there are any differences between those companies and Japanese companies. And second question is uh, that, uh, are there any good way to increase the creativity? Uh, because uh, we believe that, uh, I, I ho I'm hoping that uh, Japanese people or will change to be more creativity, um, to be more creative. And uh, I w I'm wondering whether there are any good education system or training system to increase those creativity. So those are two questions. Thank you very much uh, for the first, just, you know, for the uh, greatest questions. For the first uh, questions, uh, our, just, uh, our growth can be adopted by four non-Japanese companies. AXA, it's a French uh, large financial conglomerates, and also Abu Dhabi government, and uh, Robert Walters, and uh, also Vietnamese uh, large company. And uh, we just compare the results. At first, what we found out, Vietnamese people are so overconfident in their capabilities. <laughs> Always self-evaluation is higher than, <laughs> you know, just a fear evaluation. It's a very interesting result. On the other hand, there are, so in creativity, Japanese creativity is the worst. Also, we just you know, apply this for all major Japanese universities. I have time. I'll show you a very interesting graph. So, so maybe just, you know, each... Some just an interesting result, you know, let me just share. Maybe it might be related to your second questions. Sorry, so it is some just in Japanese, you know, uh, I'm sorry, just, you know, for English uh, speakers, English readers. This is a result of uh, each university's uh, average competencies. Could you see, you know, this you know, too? Logical thinking and uh, implementation skills. Could you say which universities? University of Tokyo. <laughs> they are so good at logical thinking and uh, implementation skills. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they are not so kanyo, you know. <laughs> 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 or just strict <laughs> for just, you know, uh, also uh, uh, not flexible enough. <laughs> So maybe it might be related to just maybe Japanese education system. So I think, oh, sorry. So because I think, you know, it might be related to uh, university exam. Because for many high school students, they have to answer, a, they have to answer like correct answers, any questions, right? Because in Japanese, you know, university exam, there's always one right answer. Right? So one right answer is not so just you know, common in innovative worlds, right? Many possible answers. But from uh, until the high schools, they have been trained to answer the same questions. Because university students, Tokyo University students are so interesting, right? Because they answer the same answers, right? You know, higher, higher scores. So I think maybe so at first, you know, I think in Korea, we have to change Japanese university uh, exam system itself. It is going to be changed from 2020. But uh, it is not so logical, uh, radical changing. And just you know, until just in high school, many creative or just you know, child just you know, curiousness might be lost. 
Because the way I just talk with high school, high school teachers, they always mention they can just you know, train creativity until grade 10 or 11. But for you know, grade 12, they always have to teach how to pass the exam. So just one answer, no various answers. So maybe just you know, this in you know, high school, just education system should be collapsed. This is what I really just want. So we are seriously working with uh, various just agent, uh, various universities. So now just one university decided to use Grow uh, for their uh, university entrance exam. So because you know, it is more just a holistic view of uh, high school students. And also now we are working with NASDA, which is, which is the largest uh, uh, English debate uh, competition uh, association in the States. Uh, I'm the representative director in Japan. And then, and then, then because one of the problems you know, for them is to just you know, replace SAT for other, another test. And the uh, debate you know, you know, committee wants to just involve this, and then we are now just working with just in GLOW whether we can just change you know, US universities in exam. But also in the, in, in the, in the, in the US, this you know, type of issues are existed, you know, how they can just create innovations. And that's maybe just one answer is maybe just a you know, Japanese uh, exam system of the universities might be a one issue. Yeah, we will do that. Thank you very much for a great just for that. Thank you so much. Hi, um, <clears throat> my name is Richard Chan. I'm CEO of uh, Mindsight, a startup company out here. We're focused on business intelligence, specifically using AI-powered uh, algorithms to inspect developers as they're going through the development process and to do something similar as you. You know, being able to take contextual data out of the performance and being able to bring that to you know a developer or to the manager and so forth. Now, there's one thing that I've, I've found very interesting in your, um, in, your, in your presentation. It's in the Japanese workplace, um, you're looking for you know, workforce liquidity. Mm. You know, giving uh, the employees the ability to you know, show their skills and have different traits come out to the forefront so that the, you know, the managers understand what's really important and what they can bring to the table. Now, in the US economy, uh, one thing that, you know, as someone who's a little bit younger has experienced that we're no longer and we're staying in one job for 20 years or so forth, and we need to be very mobile. Mm. So for our particular product, we, you know, develop scores for how well you do on your job premises. And a lot of times the developers want to take that score to the new job and be able to showcase, hey, mm. this is my performance here. Mm. Do you see something similar in your business model as well as where you know, maybe the students can take these particular uh, statistics and bring them across, you know, the industry so that they can show their performance to other enterprises. Very interesting point. Uh, we, are, uh, we are just already just asking a company, if our students can just show a growth result to them, why not hiring them? But so far, Japanese companies, HR screening system is so, how do you say, sound, but in other words, it's you know, less flexible. Understand they can't adopt just in our proposal, but just in our, as you just pointed out, in the future we would like just make this work in that way. But it's a very just good point, and we would like just change in that way. So it's really great. It's a kind of identif identifications, grow just in competency identif identification, so each person can bring you know, this to rest it to the next company, or maybe just you know to just in a bank to get a better you know just in how they say uh, you know just lending and so on. So we are seriously thinking about this, but just it takes time and further the data accumulation is more just, you know, the required for making this work. But it's a great question. <laughs> yeah, good evening. Um, first observation, um, what, my name is Scott Bump. Uh, I'm really pained to look at this because about 100 years ago, I went to Waseda University, and I really think you need to re <laughs> rerun those numbers versus KO. <laughs> Uh, separate from that, though, coming from um, you know the, the financial side of artificial intelligence, and then applying your knowledge and tools to the HR um, side, you, you probably went into that understanding even before you started pulling the data. The, the answer to our first question is that most of us are flawed in in our evaluation of, mm. of personnel, but. It, separate from that, was there anything when you took a look at your, your tools and the data that you were getting that really stood out and surprised you? 
So it's very just, you know, uh, just interesting, just some questions. To be honest, you know, this just, you know, result is most appealing to me. Because, you know, at first, my assumption was different. At first, I thought each university, you know, is no, just almost no difference. So be, be, because, you know, I don't think, you know, each university is, you know, made a very good, just, you know, how to say, learning just opportunities for students, because students don't go to universities, but, you know, don't, you know usually go to just a part-time job. But what we found out, each university has a specific just, you know, characters. It is interesting just, you know, finding. And also, another just, you know, surprising thing is, also, also we are, we are a really, 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 little bit nervous. For example, Mitsubishi Corporation and the Old Nippon Airways, do they prefer the same person or not? Because you know, we assume each company might prefer the same, almost same person. They try to just get to you know, each other. But what we found, it's each company is so different. Each company, you know, it's, it must be related to culture. And this, you know, uh, what you know, we found out, uh, also based upon our just, you know, analysis, it's, you know, different. But on the other hand, compared with Vietnamese companies, Vietnamese companies are so different. So, you know, among Japanese companies, some difference, but compared with uh, Robert Walters in the UK company and the Vietnamese companies are much, much more different. Chun so, Changpiao, uh, Daikin US. Uh, very interesting talk. I have two questions. Uh, you, you show the result for the Japanese company, and I'm kind of uh, not surprised to that. <laughs> and I'm trying to imagine, you know, the, the guy to do the interview, and what's in his mind is, okay, that this kid can fit my team, that this kid can, you know, work with, uh, you know, this corporate culture, that kind of thing. So how, how do you count those kind of emotional human relationship, corporate culture into this uh, evaluation system? And also at the end of the day, uh, if I am a, a HR manager, I, I need to read you know, the, your recommendation or evaluate sheet, whatever you propose to the company. And do you think you can show one real sheet? How you, do you evaluate the, the young student? <laughs> Interesting. So it's a very important just in part uh, because we think uh, there are somehow just a limit of artificial intelligence work. So it's emotions. To be honest, emotions is tough to judge. Emotions. But some companies try to do, for example, Hitachi creates, it's a kind of new tool to just you know, see the, how just you know, people just see you know, how you say movement. And based on this movement, how just, you know, each person <laughs> just, you know, work together and so on. They like each other and so on, by just also just checking emails and so on. Some companies try to also check in you know, emotions. But um, based upon many research papers, while data can find out some parts of humans' emotions, but the people are dead, not rational, irrational. Also data, how do you say, you know, betray you. So in other words, uh, emotions is a real tough part, and it's very tough to predict. And uh, for an emotional part, you know, it might be also related to you know, culture, should it be at the end judged by human nature? This is only just in part, maybe, that just you know, human nature can just you know, do. So also, you know, just analysis, it's a very just more, just, you know, we just always just show the rankings based upon each competencies, and the further, just, you know, also we create AI engine for each company. So, you know, so we just show in what type of just an AI final just an engine in waiting of each just, you know, you know, competencies, and also it can be changed every time new hire they can just made. It's an online process. And um, also reinforcement, just, you know, in the end, just, you know, at our company can just, you know, add just an enforcement learning part. You could, a company wants, but just, you know, no company just so far just asked us to make it. But just anyway, uh, we can just show very detailed information to each just company. But emotions part, you know, tough. Maybe, you know, human nature can do just a better job. And also, to be honest, when just we started this, <laughs> we tried to get the genetics, DNA of each person. But then, I, after just hearing from many just genetics, just, you know, professors, Oh, it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, we gave up. And the second thing, you know, also is we try to just, you know, use more just, you know, how to say, fit to beat type of just, you know, how to say, heart beat and so on. But also many people, just based upon our surveys to students, they hate it. So based on this, you know, emotional part, I just, you know, still just, they should not, you know, touch upon. But maybe just, it should be just made by 
human nature. Okay, we're at time, so hopefully you can stay after a few minutes, and if you sure, still sure, have questions, course. you can come and pose them. Please join me in thanking Masa for a fantastic talk. Thank you very much.